Good evening, and welcome to Pound Posse Presents. Slightly disorganized beginning for me, but you know, sometimes things happen. Anyway, uh, beautiful Saturday today, and tomorrow I've been getting winter warnings, winter weather warnings on my phone, so I I'm not sure what really is the problem here, except that we all are in New England, and I, I'm done with winter. I don't know about anybody else but I can't handle like another snowflake or another cold day because I'm just entirely over it. I'm ready for spring. It's April, it's mid-April. And uh, let's get back to spring. Anyway, I'm excited to share with everybody um, something, that, something really cool that happened to me last weekend. Many of you know that um, I got to meet one of my hero dogs the hero dog for 2015, Harley. And on his page and in several of the anti-puppy mill groups, they do giveaways all the time. You know, if you share the post, uh, they'll pick a random winner. And you know, when I see them, when I can, I'll, I'll share it on my pages. Well, I won one. I'm so excited. Let's, let's show what I won. Just a bunch of cool stuff. And, uh, that, you know, little things mean so much. Uh, even though Harley's been gone for two years now, which is like really hard to swallow, but you know, his mission still continues and his sidekick, Teddy, is Harley's dream keeper. Um, you know, one of my biggest moments really was going to New York and meeting him and getting those kisses and getting to hold him and, you know, just absolutely huge for little old me, who is a big mush for a lot of these dogs. But anyway, thank you to Teddy's Paige and Teddy's mom, Rudy. And I can't wait to get my stuff because it's really cool. If you follow Teddy's Paige or Harley's Paige or any of the groups, you too can um, pick up some of the cool stuff that they like to give away. Alrighty, I will take the camera back. I was like a two-year-old, I'm gonna tell you, when, when I saw that Rudy tagged me, um, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I did, I posted everywhere. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But yeah, okay, so uh, I'm a little bit of a baby. I can't help myself. All right, that being taken care of, uh, I've got a few dogs that I would like to present to you. And let's just make, you know, for the sake of, of let me fumble in the beginning and don't let me fumble later, uh, Zach reached out to me on behalf of his friend uh, who has a dog that is having some issues and he needs a new home and he needs the right home. Zach, let's get your dog, your dog up. All right, so because I kind of messed this one up, I'm reading not my notes, which is always fun because my notes are so organized. But anyway, this guy's name is Bandit. His owners have struggled with food aggression and he's moved on to being possessive over family members. He also has a fear of some men. So he's got a little nipping going on and he'll require somebody who can work with him, who's got experience with behavioral issues. You know, uh, if he goes into a shelter, he probably doesn't stand a chance because of his issues. So the family is really trying to work hard to get him into a better situation where, you know, it, it will be beneficial to the dog and he's not going to be uh, in jeopardy because of whatever, whatever his issues are. You know, it could be, I hate to say it, because of an, an unstructured family or it could be because he's just got some issues, you know, without being assessed by a trainer and without uh, somebody to work with him Anything that he's got going on is, it sounds like it's fixable, but yeah, this dog in a shelter with any behaviors, it, they're never gonna give him a chance. So by all means, if you can help, the dog is actually in Michigan, which I know is, you know, not, not our neighborhood folks, but everybody knows somebody 
and you know sharing and, and reaching out to other people uh, it's very definitely a possibility that we can find this dog the help he needs uh, I guess he's near Lapeer Michigan and he is described as an overall good dog he sleeps with his owners at night but he is protective you know he, he will get uh, in between any any signs of affection um, you know he just he needs structure and he needs discipline and he needs someone to work with his habits and break some of them he's about four years old uh, apparently he is lab poodle chow retriever and some great Pyrenees which is a heck of a combination so he's probably not a very small dog he's probably a pretty big guy um, hard to tell from the picture but uh, if anybody can help if anybody's got anybody they can reach out to first of all I'm gonna say he's shared on the pound posse presents Facebook page so you can absolutely go to the page and you can share him you know you can recap everything I'm telling you the contact information is there and the contact email for his advocate is red R E D X L I L at hotmail.com once again that's R E D X L I L at hotmail.com so realistically if we can share this guy if the right person can step up and just assess him, you know, get him into a rescue rather than a shelter, put him in a situation where he's got some discipline and somebody can work with whatever his triggers are, I'm sure you'll have yourself a wonderful dog. You know, dogs that are reactive to things are generally not happy that way. Just like when people are broken and they can be fixed, he's not really broken, but he just needs to be put on a better path. So please, if you cannot help, share him. Uh, you know, if you've got contacts out that way, maybe reach out and see if somebody can step in before the family does give him up. Uh, nobody wants to see him go to the shelter. And you know, this was kind of like a, a reaching out for help, going down for the third time type of thing. Um, Zach's friend reached out to him, Zach reached out to me, and here we are now. So if we can do something for Bandit, please let's pull together and do so. Um, everybody involved would appreciate it, and the one who would appreciate it the most would be Bandit, because he will not end up in a bad way, and you know what I mean. Okay, next up we have Petey. And look at him. Petey's owner just passed away after only having him for four months. And that was after Petey's previous owner passed away. So this poor guy must be so confused. I mean, you can see it in his face. He's, he's got like that, just those lost eyes. And I'm very sure he doesn't understand, you know, what's going on and why he's not home. Um, he really needs a break. Petey is nine years old. He's great with dogs and cats. He's house trained, up to date with vaccinations, and in good health. Again, please share if you can't adopt him, and if you are interested in poor Petey, who just doesn't seem to have any luck keeping his home now, uh, call Deb at 203-838-7729. Once again, that's 203-838-7729. Um, you know, he, he, I guess he had the first home his whole life and you know now he's he's losing people um, quite literally and it's it's got to be it's got to be so scary for him not to know what's going on and just wishing he were home so please help him out share him if you can't adopt him and um, you know it, it's true with all these dogs I, I it's my hope that when I put dogs out there somebody will share the show go to the page share it uh, you know commenting on a, a, a picture of a dog oh he's so cute well, I would have him if I could that's all really nice you know share share it share it that that's what's gonna help um, you know comments are appreciated but sharing is is what's gonna save lives all right next up is Frankie and look at that face he is just so sweet and you know one of those dogs that 
somebody butchered his ears. And the picture on the bottom, he is with one of my favorite people at Tohas. No, actually, okay, I'm going to say it. My favorite person at Tohas, John Esposito, who you saw on the show when he brought my birthday dog Murdoch on. Uh, John is just a prince among men, and he spends so much time with these dogs, um, you know, giving them the love and the attention that they really need. And so my hat's off to him. But Frankie was surrendered to the town of Hempstead Animal Shelter in March of last year. At 12 years old, a shelter is no place for him. Frankie has been passed over repeatedly, and it's just not fair. Um, you know, people are saying he's too old. Well, does that mean that he deserves to spend his life in a shelter? I mean, I don't understand people, people's trains of thought, you know? Um, doesn't it bother you that, you know, you're saying, oh, he's too old, and you move on to the next dog, and you leave him sitting there? I, I just, I don't know. I, it doesn't, I don't get it. Anyway, Frankie needs an experienced owner who will keep him away from situations that make him uncomfortable. Frankie is dog selective, and he needs to be around children who are older teens and up. A fenced-in yard will be a must, and you can find out more by visiting his Facebook page, Adopt Frankie, or by calling the Town of Hempstead Animal Shelter at 516-785-5220. Once again, that's 516-785-5220. And really, people, please don't overlook the seniors. They really, really need you more than you know. All right, next up is Rocky. Look at this beautiful dog. Look at those eyes. Um, he looks amazing. Definitely a shepherd husky kind of mix. And Rocky's becoming urgent. He isn't doing well at the shelter. He has too much energy to be confined for so many hours in a day, day after day. Rocky is about a year and a half old. He's neutered and up to date. He's great with kids. He likes some but not all dogs, and he is not a fan of cats. Again, if you can't adopt him, please share him. Uh, you know, he is, he is an urgent situation. For more information, call the Pequonic Shelter in Pompton Plains, New Jersey. And again, you know, you can't, please don't let zip code dictate the dogs that you find interest in. Um, you know, New Jersey's not that far away. It's, it's a boring ride, but, you know, it, it's worth it to save a life. So anyway, the animal shelter's number is 973-835-3980. 973-835-3980. Um, I definitely picture this dog being one that, you know, is going to need a whole lot of exercise. So if you are interested, make sure that you're up to the task or you'll be failing him as well. But Rocky is just, he's stunning. And, you know, he, he needs out ASAP. It's just he's not doing well in the shelter. So give a call or share or, you know, get involved. Do something, please. So there's a dog in Groton. Look at this little dog. I can't even stand how cute he is. The Groton Ledger Veterinary Hospital has this most adorable little guy, and they didn't post his name for some reason, uh, but that's okay too. He is a three-year-old Yorkie Dachshund mix who is good with cats, kids, and most dogs. He'll need someone who is home a lot because he needs to be let out frequently or he has accidents. That's a little dog thing. He is playful, he likes to play fetch, and he even swims. If you are interested in this little guy, and how can you not be? I mean, my God, look at him. Just look at him! Um, anyway, if you're interested, you can email glv, as in Victor, H office at gmail.com that's G L V as in Victor H office at gmail.com. Okay.
Okay, so let's see, I may switch up my plan here. Yeah, let's switch up the plan. Let's bring up Scout. Some of you may have seen this dog's picture on social media and or have been following his story. Uh, it started out with Scout being stolen from his yard and ended with him being found murdered. Scout was a part of the Eddie's Wheels family, uh, a place that does so much for, the, for dogs like Scout by giving them precious mobility back. Um, a well-respected family. Um, you know, this is a dog. I know people who have met him say he was the sweetest dog ever. Uh, there are many details that are not being published out of respect for the family, and that's understandable. But this happened in a small town in Massachusetts, Shelburne Falls, and someone has to know something. Um, you know, nobody runs off. You, how do you conceal a dog in a cart? Uh, a dog in a cart isn't going to blend in. You're not going to, like, be, hey, look at my new, new dog. Like, you know, some of these people like to steal dogs and, you know, oh, hey, look, I got a new dog. Um, no. This dog, somebody would have had to known that somebody had him. There was no reason to do that, take him on a family who loved him, a dog that's disabled and even more defenseless than a, a, a non-handicapped dog. And then to kill him, and from what I've read, throw him back behind where they got him from and try to make it look like an accident. Um, it's just pure evil. I, I don't imagine that anybody who knows who did it is feeling pretty good about it or you're a special kind of evil person, a special kind of ugly. So yeah, there, there's gotta be people who know something and there's an ever-increasing award, reward rather, being offered for information leading to the responsible person or persons. So I really hope that if anybody does have any information, they have a heart and they have a conscience and they step up and they make the call. Uh, you're being asked to call 413-834-2951 with any information. Once again, that's 413-834-2951. Um, there's, you know, like I said, an ever-increasing reward because people are coming from all over to try to make it so that somebody will drop that dime, so to speak, and turn in the person who is responsible for Scout's death. Uh, I can't imagine the pain that the family is going through. Um, you know, anybody who goes through the, the lost dog process is one thing, a stolen dog process. You know, uh, there's just so much emotion attached to it. And, you know, when, when you're starting to pick on handicapped animals, uh, I don't know what the fun in that was, but I seriously hope that the person is caught and that there's justice for Scout because it's just unforgivable. It's unthinkable. Um, honestly, it, it just, it, it boggles my mind what people will do. So if you know anything, again, please call 413-834-2951. And you know, this is another thing that's up on the Pound Posse Presents Facebook page. And I think that if people share it, this is another one of those cases where the right set of eyes might see it and the little light bulb will go on and somebody will say, hey, I know who did that. So please don't hesitate. If you don't share anybody else tonight, share Scout because his, his, his murderer needs to be found.
All right, so I'll take the camera back. And there's a situation that I just read about, and I'm, I, I don't understand people. You know, I, ne I don't think I ever did. I don't think I ever will. But shame on the Spring Lake Village senior living community for voting to kill the Canadian geese on their property. According to an article in the Record Journal, the attempts by the community to deter the geese have been inconsistent and sporadic. So rather than commit to a renewed effort to try to make the geese go away, they've decided to murdering them. Now, I understand it's all about the poop. It's not pleasant. But you're going to murder 80 geese because they're there, because they poop, because you don't like it? There are so many ways to deter geese from being on the property with a little bit of commitment and a little bit of compassion you know, it's their world too. Just because you don't want them there, you're just, you're, you're gonna murder them? Also, according to the article, the application is filed with the state, but has not been reviewed. Um, again, there are reportedly around 80 geese. You know, if you get rid of those that way, more are gonna come. So what are you gonna do? Just kill hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of geese? Aren't you going to get tired of that? Uh, according to what I read, the geese are going to be herded into a net and killed. So how are they going to do that? Can you just imagine trying to herd geese into a net? The terror that will ensue, how frightened they'll be, it's unjustifiable. They're going to hurt themselves in the process. They're going to be in a panic. And really, how are you killing them then? What, are, what means are you going to employ that is just even, there's no, no part of that that's humane. And I guess they're feeling really good about themselves for their decision because they're saying they're going to donate the meat, read carcasses, to soup kitchens and the needy. Okay, what does it taste when you like when you serve up murder? I mean, is there like a line somewhere that people are waiting for for stuff like that? I, I just I am just so over the moon upset about that. I mean, that what is what's going to be next? The squirrels because they eat from the bird feeders. I mean. How do we go on witch hunts against animals like that? That's really all that is. And shame on the state of Connecticut if they decide to approve that. I mean, there has to be something that can be done. I, I understand that stuff like this happens all the time and we just don't hear about it. But when you do hear about it, I, I think it's time to get involved and get angry. And I really don't know, I mean, would a protest be in order? Would a petition be in order? Um, I'm seriously thinking about a petition. You know, there was one of these community residents that basically was quoted as saying, well, what else can we do? Really? What else can we do? There's a lot of other things you can do. Um, I believe there are decoys that can be placed. You know, you can have a, a dog come on the property because dogs like golf courses do that dogs will chase the geese but just to kill them just to kill them because they're there 80 geese how do you how do you even begin to feel okay with that are these people going to be home when this happens are they going to enjoy listening to, to to these geese screaming for their lives all over poop like I said, I get it. it. It's not fun, but it's their world too. 
people seem to forget that wildlife deserves as much space and compassion and room and the right to live as we do, probably even more so. They don't put their will on other people. You don't see the geese trying to gang up on, on people. You don't see animals doing anything but trying to survive. And why do people always have to make it so much more difficult? Why do people have to put their will over an animal's will? I mean, it, it really does just upset me beyond words to think that a bunch of, I'm sorry, a bunch of old ladies can sit around and decide, hey, let's kill a bunch of geese. No, I, I really think that, you know, if anybody has any suggestions as to how to intervene here, I think there needs to be an intervention. So I'd be all ears. Uh, if anybody wants to contact me, um, I'm happy to get on board in any way I can because I really don't have, I, I don't think I really know what to do. And so, you know, I'm turning to anybody who does. Uh, like I said, I, I have half a mind to start a petition and I don't know what good that'll do, but maybe it's a start to bring a little bit of attention to the situation. Um, and I really hope the state doesn't approve it, but then I don't know what means that they'll, they'll resort to from there. So it, maybe it's a catch 22. <sighs> anyway, how much more time do we have? Oh, well, there isn't there just a little bit of a difference in opinion in there? I, I, from one second to 30 seconds. Anyway, all right, on that note, all right, <laughs> peace, love, and dogs. Thank you very much for watching and letting me rant. Have a good night. Till next week. Good night. Every day more people support you.